Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shell Craft One and my old barn door. And we're going to get started on our lap book journal. Um, I'm going to make two different lap books because I want to show you a couple of different ways to do things. And so I figure if I make two of them, then you can kind of see, um, you know, just multiple ways um, that you can uh, that you can cover them and, and put them together. All right, so the first one, um, I have these two child craft books that I have taken apart, and I have stabbed myself a couple of times in the process because we all know how hard these books are to take apart. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, I love using these, though. Um, I, I won't leave the cover like this. I will do something on the cover. Um, but I do think I'm going to leave the spines like this. Um, you know, of course, we'll trim them up some or whatever. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and trim this part up while we're talking. Um, and just get, you know, that little edge off of there. Um, but anyways, so, um, yeah, these books are really hard to take apart. Okay, so moving along. Go ahead and pull this off too. Pull the strings out. I had a mess when I took these apart. It was awful. Um, and you see these little flaps right here? You want to cut those off. Um, I've noticed um, sometimes when I get books from my booths or for the booth, you know, for different ladies or whatever, sometimes your book can be really, really stiff. So um, I'm going to show you a way that you can make your books and then be really good and secure, but they won't be stiff because it's hard to journal um, in a journal when it's, you know, when the cover is stiff, especially. So, okay, so, um, I think we're going to leave these spines. Um, I'll measure them in just a minute, uh, and we'll make sure. Um, so anyways, these will be one light book, these two together. And then I thought I would take just some random books and show you how to put those together and, you know, bring it into a cohesive um, lap book. So I have this one. It's a really, really, really old children's book. Um, I fell in love with it. I paid quite a bit of money for this book, um, but I absolutely loved um, the pages in it. They were, um, anyway, it was like from the 1920s or 30s, I think. So um, I think I want to leave this cover as the actual cover of the lap book because I just love everything on um, this cover. So we'll we'll use those two and I'll make these the front and the back. And so this one and they're um they're not exactly the same height. There's maybe an eighth of an inch there that's a, the difference, but I think we'll be okay with it. I think we'll be able to make it work. Um, so we'll work with it and do what we need to do. So I think what I'm going to do is this will be the center and then we will put this one on this side and then this one will go on this side. Okay. Now this spine is not going to be big enough for us. Um, so we're going to take these apart and make our own spine. Okay. And the way I do that, I like a thicker spine so that I know that my journal is going to have a good sturdy spine. It's not going to have any problems tearing or anything. Um, and it's going to stay together for a good long, long time. Okay. And so the way I do that is with game boards. Because if you get these old games that you get at the thrift store, you get some really good chipboard. So it may be cheaper to buy chipboard, but I had a bunch of these. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to use the boards. And uh, instead of trying to order chipboard and wait on it to get here or whatever. So if you don't have chipboard, you can use a game board. Um, and so you want to make sure that it's long enough. Neither one of these pieces are going to be long enough. So we'll put those to the side. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do a four inch spine on this one. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that I have plenty of room to, um, you know, stuff my book. Because y'all know me. I like to stuff them. And the last lap book that I made, I just didn't feel like my spines were big enough. 
uh, to accommodate what I wanted to put in the journal. I'm so sorry. I'm shaking the camera every time I touch this table. Anyways, so um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this spine out because we're not going to need it at all. So basically the way I do that, I'm sure y'all all know how to do this, but I just kind of go to this crease right here and just follow the crease and just cut cut this off. Hopefully I'm in frame. Okay. All right, so we got that piece. Get rid of the trash. And then I'm just going to go along the crease here on this one. Oh, didn't cut that straight at all. There we go. Okay, so now we can just chunk our spine and get rid of all our little pieces here. Okay. So I'm going to sit these covers to the side for a second while we make the spine for this one, and then we'll make spines for these two. Now, I have brought out, um, let me move my Mod Podge brushes or I will have the water spilled everywhere. Um, I've brought out my old trimmer uh, because... When you cut the chipboard, it kind of dulls your blade, and I don't want to mess up my new trimmer, so I'm going to use the old trimmer to cut the things like this. So basically what I need to do first, before I bring this out, here's how I do it. Y'all can do it a different way if you want to, but this is just the easiest way for me to do it. So I just kind of line my book cover up with my game board. I'm just trying to make sure y'all can see. I'm going to zoom in just a little. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna line my, my game board up with my cover and I'm gonna bring it to this side so I can make a mark. Okay. Now see, my book cover is not even. Either the book cover's not even or the game board's not even, but it's okay because it doesn't have to be perfect because nothing's perfect in junk journals, right? All right, now I'm just gonna make a little mark right here if I can get my pen to write. See if I can find a little scrap piece of paper somewhere. There we go. Okay. Okay, just making a mark here. Big enough for me to see it with my 40 something year old eyeballs. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna bring my trimmer in and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this down. Um, now the reason I'm gonna go ahead, let me just make sure before I do that. Yep, it's gonna give me enough. Out of this piece right here, I should be able to make all of the spines, maybe, I'm hoping. All right, so now I'm just gonna line that up and I have to kind of hold this pretty good. And this um, this trimmer has a little a little button right here that you can click. Hang on, let me get it lined up again. Um, so it has this little button right here, so I can just push that down and click it over, and it'll hold that down for me, and it kind of keeps it in place real good for me. Okay, so then I'm just gonna cut through this a couple of times because it's pretty thick. Okay, and then I'm going to unlock it, lift this up. I'm going to bend this so I can see my crease on the other side. So I'm just going to bend it over like that and then I'm going to line it back up with my crease lock it and then I'm going to go through this way and it cut it for me okay so now 
I need to cut this at four inches because I've got it the right height that I need it. So now I just need it at four inches. So I'm just going to line it up right here at four inches. I'm going to go ahead and lock it again. And I'm just going to do the same thing. This to me is just a lot easier than trying to cut it with scissors. Because y'all know me. I am not a steady hand with scissors. Okay, so now I'm just going to line up my crease. Lock it in. There we go. Okay, so there's our spine for our center. See, and it's just right. Perfect. All right, so now I need to cut our spine for these two. And I think I'm going to go two inches on each one. Because if I go two inches on each one, and this is four inches, then that gives me enough room inside to... Um, it gives all of my spines enough room to accommodate what I want to put inside. And if I do four inches on these, it makes it even... I mean, two inches a piece on these, it makes it even with the four inch middle spine. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. So, we're going to put this back in here again. And we're going to cut two spines at two inches. Sorry if I'm jiggling. Okay, so we're going to go two inches. There we go. There's one two inch spine. Now with this one, I'm going to cut this edge off instead of this one because this is a cleaner edge over here on this side. And that way I can get rid of the raggedies over there. Okay, so we're going to go at two inches. Now, you can do your spines smaller and make a smaller journal if you want to. I just have a tendency to stuff everything to the gills. And so, I do the bigger spines so I can accommodate the amount that I stuff them. Okay. So then we have that little tiny piece left. You can actually save that and use it, um, you know, for like a small spine if you wanted to. But I don't generally make them small like that, so I probably won't save that. All right, so now we have both of our spines. Well, actually, all three of our spines. So let's go ahead and put our center part together first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up. Let's see, this is, it doesn't really matter which is the front and which is the back. Um, but I like the raggedy edges to be on the inside, so we'll do it like this. Okay, so now we're just going to line this up like this on our, I'm going to just line it up on my ruler. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space in between each one, maybe an eighth of an inch. And that is your key to not having a stiff journal. If you leave yourself a little bit of room, um, instead of pushing it all the way together, so that when your book bends, you know, it kind of tucks up against each other, and that makes it stiff. But if you leave a little space in between, then that will prevent that stiffness from happening. Okay? So we're going to go here, here, and here. And like I say, there's just, I mean, let me just make sure you can see in the camera good. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Let me zoom out for you. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. So see, there's just a little bit of room between there. 
and that's how we want it okay and then I'm gonna take I just have regular old masking tape and I'm gonna take masking tape and I'm gonna tape these together first um, and that's basically just for strength in the binding okay so we're just gonna lay our tape down and make sure we're even does it really matter um, you know if it's straight or anything And I'm going to tear off right there. Sorry about shaking the camera. Okay, and then this one we're going to tape down as well. I just want to double check and make sure everything's good and straight. Okay. And then we're just going to tape here. And I think I just moved that. Nope. I did move it in a little. Ooh. Now I'm moving the camera. Sorry. Okay. So we're just going to lay that in there. Okay. I'm trying to rip. Okay, my masking tape doesn't want to rip. So we're going to get some scissors. I, I think it's just the angle I'm trying to rip it at. Okay. Now that we have our masking tape on, I'm going to unstick it from my board here, or my mat, and I'm going to pull this up and flip it over, trying not to, you know, move my cover around. And then I'm not just going to bring this around, you know, bring my tape up on it. this down bring this down sorry about the camera moving okay and then I'm gonna put some tape on this side and again this is just to reinforce it and make sure it's good and strong and we're gonna put fabric on this too so it will be a really good strong spine. Okay. I'm just going to line that up. Cut it off down there at the bottom. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job of that, did I? <laughs> it doesn't have to be straight. And you're not going to even see it, so it doesn't really matter. But... <laughs> All right, so now we have our spine together, and see, it's not together good, so you have to still be careful, um, but there are two purposes for this. The first purpose is to strengthen the spine. The second purpose is for, to hold it together until you get your fabric on it, okay? So now um, we're going to pick what fabric we want because we need something to cover this up, um, and I am a firm believer in, in using a fabric spine simply because it's stronger than paper. You can use paper and that's fine, but you're going to get breakage. Um, you know how when you bend your pages, um, that paper is eventually going to break over time. Um, so I just like using the fabric, fabric because it seems to work a little better as far as... Um, uh, given your your cover life okay so before we do the fabric on the spine i'm going to go ahead and add these two spines and and the cover in the back the very back okay so let me do that and that's probably all we'll do in this video because i'm going to break this up into pieces and i don't want them to be long videos um so we're going to take this over here I am so sorry I keep hitting that camera. Okay, so did I do this right? I did not do this right. Doggone it. Hmm. I need these two to be in the middle. And the reason I need these two to be in the middle is because, I'll show you. You're going to have a spine here. And then your book. But these are going to fold in. 
And I want these to be the, the, like when you, I'm probably confusing you, but like when you fold this in, you know, you're going to have this spine here and, and then another one over here, but I, I, I didn't want this to be the cover. So we're going to take this apart. Hold on a second. I'm going to take it apart. Okay. I now have the right cover on it. Sorry about that. <laughs> now, when you bend it, you're going to want to kind of push that tape down into the crease there as you bend this. <clears throat> and that will help. And then I'm going to do this side. See how the tape's folding? But if you do this, as you fold it on in, it kind of puts the, whatever wrinkle you're going to have, it puts it inside your spine and then we're going to do it this way too just a little not all the way <clears throat> like we did on the inside but that way it just helps um it helps it to be able to to bend easier uh, without crinkling up okay so now we're actually gonna for real <laughs> this time um we're gonna add this spine Okay, we're going to need to trim these down just a hair, I think. Let me just take a peek at this real quick. Yep, it's a little bit, the spine is a little bit too long. So let me just, let me make some adjustments and I'll be right back. Okay, I made some adjustments to the camera too, so that way you can see a little better. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with this one as we did with our last one and we're just going to line it up I, li I like to line it up on the grid lines of my mat because that way i know it's straight and I then i don't have a wonky cover okay and then i'm going to line this up right here and we're going to have just a smidge more on the top and bottom edges of this one so here and down here, but I'm okay with that. And if you're not, you can trim this if you want to. I just, I didn't feel like it was a big enough of a difference to make a difference. So now we're just going to tape it. I like to lay my tape down pretty gently because if not, you'll move. See how it just moved? <laughs> That's okay, though. We can adjust it. Okay. Straighten that up. Straighten that up. And it still gives me just a little bit of room in between. Okay. That one. And then we'll tape it on the back side. And again, it doesn't matter if you feel like you've got too much room. Like this, this gap is a little bit bigger, but I'm okay with that. Um, and then I'm just going to line these up. I'm trying not to cover up this little girl over here, but I'm not going to have a choice if I want. I just want to make sure, you know, my spine stays good. And have a good sturdy spine. Okay. this piece up and then I'm just going to fold these over make sure we're good and stuck okay then I'm going to take my bone folder bend 
and push that in and bend and push that in I'm not doing it with the sharp side of my bone folder. You know how one, one side is a little sharper and the other side's a little more blunt. I'm doing it with the more blunt side so that I don't rip my tape. Okay, and then we're going to do it on this side too just to make sure. Like that. There we go. I'm hoping this is going to work. I think it will though. All right, and then we're just going to add the other one to this side. And then we'll call that a video. And we'll come back in the next video and um, do the other book. And we'll get some fabric on the spines. And we'll get as much in as possible. All right, so I'm just going to leave a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to go ahead and tape that while I have it in place. not to move my spine and then we're going to push this one over leave a little bit of a gap Straighten my reach and we're just going to take this one like that I'm going to flip it over fold those in it doesn't really matter if it crinkles up a little I mean you don't want to you know just like crinkle it up a bunch but that little bit's not going to hurt it grab our bone folder and push this in this way while we're here okay and then we'll do this side there we go now the way this is gonna work I put that one on upside down but it's okay because you're not going to see that at all. That's going to be completely covered, so it's not going to matter. Okay, so the way it's going to work is you're going to have this spine on this side, this spine on this side, and that's going to be your front. And there's your lap book, or the skeleton of your lap book, okay? So don't, um, don't put any fabric or anything on yet because... Um, or paper because there are things that you have to think about uh, before you start putting your pockets and things like that in so um, just follow along with me and and we'll get there I promise so um, so here's our skeleton that's how it's gonna work and then it opens up like that and it opens up like that again whoops shaky shaky camera Okay, so we're going to call this a uh, video and um, we'll go, I'll go ahead and um, in the next video, I'll show you how to add your coverings and um, if we have time, we'll, uh, we'll do that, um, the child craft books and put those together as well because they're going to go together a little bit differently. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the comment box below. Please like and subscribe for me if you will, and I'll see you in the next video. Big hugs.